Hey guys, Saga here, and today's video is going to be an advanced Roadhog guide. So I'm going to talk about some of the things that really helped elevate my Roadhog play. Before we get into it, if you guys didn't know, I lowered my sensitivity. There's a video on that, I'll leave a link at the end. And I lowered it significantly from what I was used to. My old sensitivity, I was playing with my wrist as the pivot point, and now I'm playing with an elbow, you know, my whole arm, I'm using a large mouse pad. And all of these things help contribute to my Roadhog getting better. But I'm not really gonna focus on the strictly, you know, like uh, out of the game mechanical details that help me get there. Instead, I'm gonna focus on things that you can do in the game in order to help your Roadhog get to the next level, to get a sick KDR with him, and to, to really make Roadhog feel like the beast that he is. All right, let's get into it. So to help us understand these new tips and these new ways of thinking, I'm gonna use a match that I recently played that I thought typified pretty much everything that I've recently changed and recently started thinking about. And this way you can see it in practice and I can comment on it as it happens. All right, off the bat, not really an advanced tip, but Genji can't reflect from the side. So if you see a Genji who isn't aware of your, you on the side, just throw the hook, take him out, don't wait for a reflect, just kill him. Roadhog's shotgun at a close range is an extremely powerful tool, and oftentimes people rely way too heavily on the hooks, and then are sort of standing back, shooting right clicks, kind of doing trash damage or some kind of mid-range damage, but not really getting guaranteed kills unless a hook's up. One of the big moments of revelation for me was to just close the distance with that shotgun, jam it in someone's face and pull the trigger. You will drop people, you can fight toe-to-toe -to -toe with Reaper, I mean, like, there's all kinds of things that will die when you properly shove your shotgun in its face. The next big thing really helped, you follow up with shots, always. So I see a lot of Roadhogs throw hooks, they'll catch somebody, uh, and if they one-shot them, they'll die, and if they don't, maybe they'll escape. But when it comes to people like Zarya, you can't expect her off of one hook to just die. You need to plan to follow up shot and to chase her down. You need to know that her reaction's going to be a quick retreat and to immediately chase her, land the two, two to three follow-up shots that are necessary, and finish her off. That's a fight you can most certainly win if you stay on her. This hook miss is really important because Oftentimes, when you miss a hook that you think you should have landed, uh, and I don't mean the game cheated you or anything, I mean you screwed up and you missed the hook, you go on a bit of tilt, and as a result, your future hooks aren't as on point. It's important to know that if you miss a hook, to just brush it off and, and keep going. It's gonna be up in seven seconds, you can land kills with other things in between. Don't fixate on a hook you should have had, instead think of landing that future hook. Tilt's a real thing in this game. So your mindset does matter. If you missed a hook and you thought you should have had it, uh, as in you, you thought that you skill-wise should have been able to make that hook, that kind of puts you off. You feel like you're playing poorly, even if you're not. So just brush it off, go on to the next hook. Roadhog and in general characters with controlling abilities need to always be map aware. You always need to pay attention to where somebody is, where somebody is who can alt, and know that it is your responsibility to stop it. Sometimes I'll even not use my hook on easy to kill targets under the suspicion that somebody's about to alt or alt my team. This is certainly not an advanced tip when you alt always aim for the center of the reticle. It is just so much more damage. I only mention this because when I figured this out long ago, it was a revelation. Alright, I'm sure everybody knows by now that this is a thing, but dumping people into the pit is just a great way to get an edge. Uh, it's especially good when you get a really early pick on a character who doesn't normally die easily, and you take them out without a fight. So if there's like a Reinhardt or something and you're on this stage, or you're on like the well or something, and you can get a pick where you just dump him in the well, you need to be going for that, you need to be prioritizing that, and you need to be looking for ways to get that. The reason being, there's a certain amount of damage each character can do before they die. Even if it's a totally losing fight for them, they just get smashed, rates are they're gonna get some shots off, your health's going to be lower, and it's gonna make it easier for other people to take advantage of your low health. When you remove a tank or like a, a hard to kill character from the fight like that, they don't get any of their damage value, their teammates don't get to capitalize on any of it, and then you, you're just ahead by, by huge margins, even more than taking out like a healer at least, say. If you just drop a Reinhardt from full health into a well or into a pit, you, you have helped your team in an instrumental way, and you have swayed the balance in your team's favor. All right, so if you're a fool like I am here and you occasionally walk into these or if you are hit by them, a good idea is always just to alt, push people away. I'm sure that's a lot of people's natural reaction. Sometimes this is a bad idea, like when it's so obviously doomed, like there's a Pharah alting on top of you or something and there's like no way you're gonna be able to push back and kill these people before you just die. 
then it's better to save your alt. But in a situation like this, where there's time, where there's people in front of you, there's a Reinhardt shield, using the alt can totally turn around, you know, this alt gets turned around on them and they wind up dying while my team is totally fine because I use my alt there. Really take the time to aim your right clicks. Uh, you're looking for headshots. You're looking for really meaty shots too, like something that hits their whole hitbox. If you're able to do something like that, usually you'll either drop them to half health, one shot them, or somewhere in between that. And and all too often, I see a lot of Roadhogs just sort of spam their right click toward red. Like they're not trying to aim it at body parts or places or making specific adjustments due to movement. It's just like sort of spam the choke or spam the general direction of people. And that's a total mistake. You're missing out on so much damage that Roadhog can do. He, his, his, his weapon kit alone, without the hook, can do a ton of damage if you're aiming properly. Sometimes hooks will not behave the way you want to. Uh, you'll get that pick off on the Reaper and he'll wind up being able to raid form out. Uh, don't get discouraged, just go ahead and do it again. Uh, one of the best pieces of tanking advice I ever received was from, I think it was Miro? I want to say Miro, but I could be wrong. Uh, but basically, the idea was you need to target your counter. So if you, see a, if you see a Reaper on the field, it sounds counterintuitive to hunt him down as Winston, but that's what he does. He sticks on the Reaper. The same thing with Roadhog. Reaper is your biggest threat, so you need to take him out of the fight every single time. But luckily, it's not as bad of a fight as you think it is. I think the big mistake a lot of Roadhogs make is they miss their hook and they assume they're defenseless. Okay, it's time for me to eat. I've got to buy time. Hopefully a teammate heals me. The problem is Reaper can easily outdamage that. If you miss your hook versus Reaper, what you want to do is stand and fight. If you can land a close left click, uh, you can one-shot Reaper. So if he's like chasing after you around a corner or something, oftentimes what I'll do is I'll run around the corner, turn, and then run into him and blow my shotgun blast off. Oftentimes they don't expect this so much, they expect to be the pursuer, they expect to be in control of the fight after they've dodged the hook, that, that you can just turn the tables on them quite easily. Remember, it is almost always a mistake to eat unless he's at a very, you know, very like medium to long range. Uh, because if he closes the distance while you're eating and then gets shots off, even if you turn your back to him so he can't get headshots, he can still kill you before you're done eating. Even when your right click is at the range where it's not doing significant damage, it's still important that you are doing that damage. In the same way that like a Winston landing his electricity on everybody matters, you're doing sustained damage over time, even if it's just like 20% of someone's health. Like just aim your shots, try to make them count the most, but if you're at that trash damage range, still shoot them. Still land the shots, because any sustained damage is gonna help. It's important in all things situations to always look for the guy who's trying to finish you off, whether that's a Reaper coming in nano boosted or it's a Farrah in the sky. If you can land that hook, you might not be able to save yourself. In fact, you probably won't be able to save yourself. You're like the biggest target, but you might be able to save other people. Okay, so you'll notice here I'm targeting Reaper first and then Mercy. Um, that's somewhat interchangeable. Generally, I will kill Reaper first. He's by far the biggest threat to me. He's most likely to take my life away. Uh, even if a Mercy reses the Reaper after you've killed it, you still have that time to know that he's res to respace yourself, to buy time for cooldowns, to set up a shotgun blast. So I, I like to target Reaper first, and when he comes back up, you've got to target him again. But generally, your priority is Reaper, then healers, then everybody else. Or if it's early in a match, like there's no way Mercy has a res yet, you want to target lead DPS. So whether it's a Reaper or like a 76 or something, take them out of the fight, make it a 6v5, and then take out healers. Now that we've covered the other examples, I want to talk to you about one last thing. So when I started playing Roadhog, I was very hook reliant. I spent a lot of time on it. Uh, and as a result, I would have some games where my hook accuracy would be something like 80%. Like I'd end the game with 80%. It felt amazing. Like, and occasionally when you'd get that card because you hooked so many enemies and you had 80% accuracy, people would be like, wow, felt great, right? But I wasn't playing the best Roadhog I could then because I was only going for safe hooks to get that. Now I'm going for hooks against Pharahs. Constantly, I pull them out of the sky more than I see other people shoot them often. <laughs> I'm always trying to hook Genji either really quickly or right after the reflect. I'm trying to hook under shields, over shields, like all of the hard shots. You want to be trying these because look, the hook's only on a seven second cooldown and when it's not like a critical do or die situation, you want to be taking these chances because the chance that you hit, even if you only hit 50% of the time instead of like 80, 
that 50% of the time, you're gonna get so far ahead. And then you can go for more dangerous predictive hooks. Like, I assume this person's about to be here. Use your game sense. Use sound to hook. Like, go for these more dangerous things because in the long run, you will be a better player. You will be a better hooker. And isn't that what we're look looking for, to be an actual better player rather than have bigger numbers? The other thing I want to mention is that the biggest change in my own personal philosophy was discovering his shotgun again. Before, I didn't truly appreciate how deadly it was at a close range. I didn't truly appreciate how deadly his right click was if it spaced perfectly. Um, and now I'm really looking for those edges. As a result, my KDR has gone from 2.81 to 3.66, and it's rising. Like, Every day I play more Roadhog, it keeps going up. 3.66 is, by the way, 3.66 kills to every one death is not something to scoff at. Eight or top 6%. Also, I've been landing with my damage in the top 6% from these tips, especially with trying to land those shotgun bl blasts, making sure that I'm not spam shooting, instead I'm aiming every shot. It matters so much. Like, you will do so much more damage. So many more people will die. Uh, before, when I played Birdhog, I felt like he was a throw the hook, kill the guy, wait seven seconds, attempt to do it again type hero. And as a result, there was like a limit to how many multi-kills you can get. But now that I'm realizing how powerful the shotgun is up close, how powerful it is while spaced, I get like, you know, three, four kills like very often with no alts. Like it's, it's mean, it's nasty. Put the time in, Roadhog's a great hero to learn, especially since so many people still want to play DPS if you're solo queuing. Uh, that playing a tank is just a resourceful role that needs to be filled. Might as well fill it with somebody who can do the damage and can still have that DPS-esque feel to him too. All right guys, that's it for today. If you like my content, please subscribe. I make Overwatch content, I vlog, I make Hearthstone content, I travel the world, I do all kinds of things. Uh, in the future, we're gonna have some new game shows, some other type of things, not like a not Price is Right, but like other shows about games. So if you like that kind of stuff, subscribe. And if you are already subscribed, please turn on your notifications. If you guys would like to see my Why You Should Lower Your Sensitivity video, you can find that over here. And if you'd like to see part two of the 3v3 solo queue holy trinity, you can also find that right here. It's also kind of like a May guide, so check that out. I'll see you guys later.